Hey, what's up guys? Glad you're joining me today on this video. We're talking about Enneagram Type 6, The Loyal Skeptic, and uh, we're uh, doing a discussion on when good goes bad, uh, and specifically today for the Type 6. And so what this is about is, you know, each of us on the Enneagram, we have certain strengths that we bring into the game. Um, you might look at them kind of like superpowers. You know, each one of us has a certain uh, tendency to have advantages, you might say, because of the way our personality is, is wired. But those advantages or those superpowers can actually, at times when overplayed, can start to work against us. And if we don't develop the full spectrum of our personality, we may over rely or over depend on those strengths and those strengths can become like an Achilles heel for us. And so today we want to talk about the type six, the loyal skeptic, and um, we want to look at a list of about five or so things that uh, I think are strengths of a six, but if uh, not moderated, can actually become something that makes, makes life more challenging for you and for the people that live with you and interact with you and work with you. Six is okay, just a little bit of a review. Um, I do have a daughter that's a six. I've got five kids, so we've got between them and their, you know, uh, their husbands and fiancés, we've, we've just about got every number covered on the Enneagram. Um, I'm a seven, of course, and uh, my wife is a two. Um, I've got a daughter that's an eight, another daughter that's a four, another daughter that's a nine, a daughter, a fourth daughter is a six, and I've got a son that's a five. So um, one of my daughters is married to a nine, and the other one's getting married to a three. So we've got we got just about everybody covered. By the time we're done, and I'm sure our first grandkids come in this uh, this next spring. So I'm sure by the time we're done, Lord willing, we'll have every number on the Enneagram represented in our family somewhere. So um, uh, the six, you know, is the loyal skeptic. This is the person that um, is unsure and wants to be sure. This is a person that, for whatever reasons, it feels like they their ability to sort and reason and troubleshoot and problem solve um, seems like it's kind of, you know, askew a little bit. And so... Uh, they sort of overcompensate by always troubleshooting, always problem solving, always running worst case scenarios. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, they can be, you know, the 6'5", can be very heady, and uh, they're called the defenders. Um, I think my mom was probably um, a six wing five. Um, these are the people that um, sort of look at the world like, these groups will keep us safe and these groups you know will have our back and these other groups are a threat and so we need to align ourselves with the right denomination of churches we need to align ourselves with the right political parties and the right organizations and uh, we need to be prepared um, and we need to save our money and we need to um, you know do things in the right way and then we'll be safe and we need to make you know the right connections and we'll be safe and we need and everything's about you know what could go wrong and the bad side and the and stop and think and you know before you take a step forward and you know so these are very cautious people um um uh, very level-headed you know they they probably you know are good at analyzing data and information um, problem solvers, you know, the five wing six is the problem solver. So they're right next to that. The six wing seven, you know, is called the buddy. And this is the good friend that, you know, is, uh, is there to support you and to be, um, with you through thick and thin and, you know, is going to be of a great encouragement to you and a great support to you. Um, a little more lighthearted than the six wing five. Um, and but it, it's as if the sixes you know are looking for assurance it's like they even though they are the you know the the proverbial problem solving prepared over prepared get everything done right watch out because you know 
the bad guy is going to get you so we got to make sure everything's done the right way and and we're tied in with the right people and and uh we, you know we're following the traditions and we're doing what's expected and we give people no cause you know to turn against us even though they do all of that they they still live with sort of that insecurity and essentially the six is is the most obvious of the fear types five six and seven you know they you spend time with them and and you can pick up that fear anxiety energy from them you know um whether the glass is half full or the glass is half empty sixes are sure that it's going to break and it's kind of the whatever could go wrong will go wrong um and so sixes are looking for support um they're looking for someone to help them work through the many concerns they have they're not necessarily looking for somebody that will give them the answers but just somebody that will help them process the the information they want to do it themselves they they just they want you to maybe give them some an ear just give them an ear and give them some support because they want to work through the solutions and get to the point where they can say, okay, I think everything's going to be all right. And I can let go of this anxiety. Our relationship's going to be okay, you know. Um, and so, I mean, I do appreciate sixes. My daughter's a six, like I said. And she, um, you know, she's a good kid. She just is. She, like, she she wants to please you. She wants to, uh, um, she's responsible. Um sixes i think are going to be like over responsible um when healthy they're going to be over responsible um they can like they can foresee like everything that might go wrong and so we need to prep for that we need to you know we you know don't light a candle mom's not home because if you light a candle well an accident could happen and the whole house could catch on fire and and you know sixes think like that like this is what could happen this is the danger this is the potential threat and so now the, the the downside of that is you know they can get stuck they can get really stuck and not able to move forward because they can become kind of paralyzed by fear um, and be so cautious that they don't move forward and take action so let's go through this list together and I hope this is helpful to you and encouraging to you and you know if nothing else it, it may just reconfirm some some things you already know about yourself um, number one is what superpower the six has is one of them is the ability to accurately assess risks and threats. Okay, and I've kind of already talked about that. The ability to accurately assess this is a potential danger, this is a potential threat, this could go wrong, um, these people could end up in trouble if they, you know, don't get that form filled out on the day it was due. And so that is a great gift especially in the work environment i want employees working with me you know fellow employees that think like that i want at least some fellow employees that think like that that whoa -oh, you know if we don't do this right that we could end up you know losing our shirt here and so we've got to be cautious and we need to you know demonstrate some care and some concern um so that that's a strength so let's leave it at that. But then what's the dark side of that? Well, the dark side of that is um, they could be so attuned into watching out for potential risks, threats, dangers, that they may overestimate how risky a situation is. Um, and they may see threats when threats don't actually exist. And again, this can paralyze sixes and keep them from moving forward. Now, I, I've seen this happen, you know, on more than one occasion where um, a six will get nervous or a group of sixes will get nervous about something that's harmless. And, you know, uh, all of a sudden they'll kind of like mutiny against or raise objections against, you know, uh, uh, something that's harmless, but they want to be cautious and they want to be overly cautious you know maybe for example they'll see um, a symbol on a on on a food package you know they'll see a symbol on the food package that they don't understand so some company uses a logo or has some kind of symbol that they use and then i'll get you know this phone call as a pastor i'll get this phone call 
from a concerned six, hey, I saw this image on this box of cereal and I don't know what it means. Do you think that this image might have something to do with the mark of the beast? Or do you think that this image, you know, uh, that they have is, is put on there um, so that, you know, the government can keep track of what I'm buying at the grocery store? And it's, it's as if, you know, sixes can see potential threats literally on the, on the cereal box, you know. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that those kinds of things don't exist. I just don't think most of us have an eye for that. Most of us don't look at the world through that grid of watch out, you know, this is another indication or this is a possible indication that, um, you know, they're out to get us. And so sixes are always seeing like the agenda, you know, that there's an, every time they watch a movie, you know, they, they pick up on, oh, there's an agenda behind this movie. They're trying to promote these ideals and they're trying to subvert these ideals and they listen to music and what do they hear? An agenda, especially the six, five, they're going to hear the agenda, you know, here's the agenda. They're trying to promote these values and they're trying to subvert and suppress these values. Um, sixes are very, and again, I'm not saying that stuff isn't true. I'm just saying most people just listen to music. They just like music and they just watch movies and they, they don't, they don't really sit around and think about, you know, the agendas behind, uh, you know, everything. And I think sixes, they really do pick up that stuff, you know, um, they're very aware, you know, and, and they're cautious about, you know, what are they feeding us now in genetically modified food and vaccinations and fluoride in the water. And I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. And um, it, it's, they're, they're troubleshooting, they're problem solving, and they're seeing potential threats and dangers everywhere. And again, that's a great strength, but it could also, you know, cause a six to hesitate and, and become paralyzed. I mean, and literally, you know, buy the bunker have it installed, subscribe to survival food, you know, and, um, and sort of wait out a, an apocalypse that may never, may never come. And that could keep you from living and, you know, enjoying life or being present to life as it is because of that potential danger and threat that one day they're going to get us, you know, one day they're going to get us. And so, you know, we got to be ready for that. And, again, in that sense, sixes can find themselves living in the future, you know, living with the threat of the future and not being able to just sort of come to the reality of today. Like if you ask a six, well, are you in danger right now? Well, no. Okay. All right. So if you were present to right now, you could realize that you're not in any threat or danger right now. So, okay. I'm sure sixes are having a hard time with this as I'm saying it. They're like, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, you know, but what you don't understand is, yeah, but I know I get it. And you can do that. That's exactly what I'm saying is you can do that, you know, until you're paralyzed, until you, you can't, you can't go to Disney World, you know, because, well, Disney is supporting some, you know, organizations and some, you know, things that I don't approve of. And I can't go to Chick-fil-A because, well, Chick-fil-A is, you know, they're, they're subverting and they're promoting this. And then, well, you, you can't go to McDonald's because, well, now they have, and it's like everything. I mean, literally, you, you, you could do that with anything and everything. And so six is, you know, they like, they, and they want to align themselves with the right you know, religious group. But the reality is, is there's no perfect denomination or no perfect religious group. And so if you want to dig and dig and dig, you are going to find, you know, failures and inconsistencies and 
problems in every business, every organization, every civic group, every church, every denomination, every everything. Um, and so given enough time and enough investigation, you know, a six could find a reason to not belong to any group, which then where are you? Then you're by yourself, right? And which is not where sixes want to be. They don't want to be by themselves. They want to be in the company, you know, of of the secure. Um, so I think we can kind of pick up, you know, some some sympathy here for for what it's like to be a six. Okay, good problem solvers. Superpower number two: good problem solvers. They have very analytical minds, and you know, uh, they can break things down. Uh, into their component parts and find the best ways to address those problems and situations. Well, how's that a how is that how can that become a weakness to be a good problem solver? Well, uh, it can become a weakness when everything is a problem. You bring that ability to problem solve into everything, and so everything then is looked at through the lens of this is a problem. But not everything is a problem. Um, your kids, for example, or your, your husband. If, if I look at my wife through the lens of what her, what's wrong with her or what's wrong with the relationship or what the potential dangers and problems are, if I, if I look at my wife or my kids through that lens 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if I look at them through that lens of what could potentially go wrong, what could they do, what, what, what needs to change in them, how could I, we be safer, how could this relationship be safe? Again, you kind of end up going, look, you look, kind of can look at everything as though it's a problem, but, but not everything is a problem. Um, not everything is a potential, even a potential problem. Some people, you know, are just there for us to love and to enjoy. And not a problem to solve. But sixes have this problem-solving mentality, right? And so, given any situation, they're looking at it as though it's a complex issue that needs to, to be solved. But... You know, your family reunion, maybe you could just enjoy them. You could just love them. You could just enjoy your time together with your family without thinking of them as something's wrong with them that needs to, they need to, you know, get on board with, with, uh, with the new information that you, you understand. Maybe they just need to be loved and cared for. Um, I think. Sixes can find problems where problems don't exist. And that can push people away from you because, you know, I don't want to think of myself as a problem. So when you think of me as a problem or what's wrong with me or what needs what I need to change, you can see where people might resist you because, well, quit telling me what I need to do. Quit telling me how I need to change. Quit telling me what I believe is wrong. Quit telling me. Um, so you can create problems by your own um, desire to solve problems. You can create problems where they don't exist because you see problems that don't exist. And when you see a problem, when you see, when you create a problem in your mind that doesn't exist, you might actually create a real problem with somebody. If, if I go looking for how my boss can do this better, and I feel compelled, you know, to share that with them. It may not be long until my boss has a problem with me because I'm always second guessing and always troubleshooting everything they're doing and saying. And now there is a problem. So my boss is now frustrated with me because, because I've become frustrating to him or to her. Okay. So Sixes can over-index the information, the negative information, and at the same time sort of underestimate the positive. 
And so they might leave an organization that's 95% perfect for them because they can't get on board and support some aspect of that company. You know, this company has decided that they are going to um, not recycle, you know, part of their waste. And so that can become so problematic and so frustrated to a very concerned six that they say, I can't associate with this company anymore because this company is dropping the ball. They're polluting X and they're polluting Y and they've not doing this recycle thing the way they should. And so I can't be associated with this anymore. I mean, that's just an example. I don't know how you feel about recycling. I don't want to get into that discussion. But I just mean there's there may be some aspect, some minute aspect of this company or this organization or this church that just rubs the six the wrong way. And so they may give up association with that organization, which 95% is a perfect fit for them because they just can't get on board with that, you know, that minute, overwhelming problem to them. Overwhelming problem you know, crisis for them. Okay, number three, insightful and analytical. Sixes are very insightful and analytical. They ask the right questions, they gather and analyze the right data, and they generate useful and accurate insights about what is going on. Okay, good, so how can that be a problem? Well, sixes can get stuck questioning and get stuck in their doubt and their endless analysis to the point that you know, maybe they don't take action, they can become paralyzed. Okay. All right. Number four, precision and attention to the process. Okay. So precision and quality, a desire to see things done correctly, especially six is, um, what is it? The, so the self-preservation six, the six that looks like a, a one, you know, um, the, they, they can get so, you know, caught up in, you know, we need to follow the rules because the rules will keep us safe. That's the way six is, I think, think about that is the rules will keep us safe we follow the protocols we follow the guidelines we follow the procedures and then and then we'll be okay um and sixes find safety in being precise and being exact um and when things are predictable and the outcomes are predictable okay well what's the danger in that um well the reality is is life isn't always predictable and success isn't always predictable. There has to be some room in your mind for flexibility. Flexibility, you know, is is important as well. You can't always predict everything and it, nothing's ever gonna come out exactly, you know, the way you expect it to. So there has to be this willingness at times, at least, an open-mindedness to being able to go with the flow and for plans to change. And I think probably the six wing seven is, has an easier time with that than the six wing five. Um, the last thing is loyalty and reliability. Okay, right. The six is called the loyal skeptic, right? So loyal is a big part of that. Loyalty is something that sixes are looking for. And so it's something they demonstrate. They demonstrate to you what they're looking for. They, they want reliable, loyal companions in life um, that will be alongside of them to offer support and guidance when they feel like they're not able to provide their own guidance to the ability that makes them feel comfortable making decisions. And so they're looking for support and, and loyalty. And so that's what they demonstrate. They demonstrate what they're looking for. They will be loyal to you and loyal to the company and loyal if they have gotten over the initial hurdle to trust. And this initial hurdle can, can be quite difficult for a six to overcome. And what I'm saying is, is if a six believes that you are worthy of their loyalty, then they will be loyal to you. But it can be hard for a six to get to the point where they really feel like you are worthy of their trust. 
It's hard for sixes to trust. They want to trust. They want to rely. But they kind of always leave a little bit of suspicion. And that's why it's loyal skeptic. They leave a little bit of room for suspicion and doubt in probably every relationship where they want to see for themselves and they want to test it out for themselves. And so they're called sweet and sour, hot and cold. Sixes are very much volatile in they'll be extremely loyal to you until they're not. And when you give off some vibe to them that you do not have their best interest at heart or that you are not as reliable or as trustworthy as you might once have appeared, that six that was loyal to you may create a mutiny against you. Um, and I think that's hard for people to, to, uh, to accept when, you know, Sally has been such a loyal employee all this time and has been so faithful and so dedicated. And now there's rumors that Sally is conspiring with other people in the office to get the boss fired. And sixes can be like that. They, they have a hard time fully, you know, trusting. They want to and they try to but they always have this you know little bit of suspicion and caution that this person could lead us over a cliff and so somebody needs to be watching out somebody needs to be you know checking the facts you know somebody needs to be looking over the shoulder and somebody needs to be doing the investigative work because how do we know for sure that this person really has our best interests at heart and if you're a six i want you to understand that there's a little bit of that in every type, I'm sure, but it doesn't keep us awake at night. I think most other types just realize that there's always an element of risk in everything. There's always an element of risk in every relationship. There's always an element of risk in every job. There's always an element of risk in, in your health and every in what you eat and no matter what you do there's an element of risk and i think most of us have just come to accept that and we just you know we figure we'll handle it when we get there um you know we'll be all right we'll handle it when we get there we'll land on our feet and what's what's amazing really is sixes are the most likely to be able to handle it but they probably think that they're least likely to be able to handle it if there's a crisis i want to go to a six if there's a famine, if there's a, an accident, I want to go to a six to help me work through that process. But sixes themselves, you know, are probably least likely to feel that they'd be able to handle it or that they are prepared enough to handle it. But the rest of us are going to go to a six to help us handle a crisis. So it's, it's kind of funny how these personalities work. Um, sixes have high standards for determining who is trustworthy and who deserves their loyalty. And, and almost, you might say, impossible standards. Um, because the sixes that I know and love, they're always just a little bit suspicious. You know, they've always got to just raise their hand and ask that one more question just to see if you know what you say you know. Just to see, just to test, just, you know, just, just, just plain devil's advocate here. Just, you know... Just what if somebody were to say this? Well, what if somebody were to say that? How should we respond if 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 somebody were to to ask this difficult question? You know that, and sixes are kind of always you know prodding and you know poking the monkey to see if the monkey's going to you know to give up the fight. Um, they may withhold their loyalty for a long time and withhold their trust for you if they're not really sure you're reliable. And even once they decide you're reliable, I think, you know, wake up tomorrow, tomorrow's another day. They may, they're scanning all the time. They're scanning. What did you mean by that? And why did you say it like that? And are you suggesting that such and such? Are you, are you hinting that? And so what did you, they're, they're, they're looking for meaning in what you say and what you do. Do your, do your words and your actions line up with what you say and what you 
what you uh, what you proclaim and if there's any inconsistencies there sixes are going to spot them sixes are going to find them they're going to identify those and then go ah ah what about this there's great comfort in all of us you know being together and all of us celebrating this holiday together and all of us being on the same page and yet sixes are sometimes the most likely to to be suspicious of the group you know so it's it's a dichotomy i think sixes are a dichotomy sweet and sour hot and cold they're for you and then they're against you they will go along with you because you're dominant and strong and seem powerful until the group decides that that you're not trustworthy and then the six might side with the group against you and so all right so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful to you i hope it's encouraging to you as always be present to life don't miss what's right in front of you because of what could happen tomorrow or what that person said to you in the past and uh, you're still you know remembering it and holding on to that information because you know sixes will do that they'll they'll remember what you said and what you didn't say and 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 they kind of mark you you know um, maybe you're not a reliable source maybe you're not a trustworthy person maybe you're not and the reality is is all of us have got our problems our weaknesses and at times we're going to say and do things we don't mean and at times we're going to get you know get it wrong so we forgive each other and we patch things up and we put our arms around each other and we say hey you're not perfect i'm not perfect but yet the lord's made us a family and here we are together let's let's go on with life together and so sixes just realize that you can't predict every problem that's going to come you can't you know you can you can do this to a point that you know you're stuck so i think the way to solve the problem always is to come back to how are you doing right now how are you doing right now you know is, are they out to get you right now i mean are you in the principal's office right now in trouble you know um maybe maybe the worst case scenario is not going to happen maybe the best case scenario is going to happen maybe maybe you're getting called to the principal's office because the principal wants to promote you okay i think the six is always going to worry that nope oh, i'm probably getting expelled i'm probably getting kicked out i'm probably this is the last straw they're going to get me now um you know maybe the call that's coming tomorrow is going to be a call of blessing it's going to be a call of fortune it's going to be a call of 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 good things and um and if it's not hey who best to handle it than a six i mean you're the problem solver right you're the you're the defender you're the buddy um who best to handle it but you so as hard as it is sixes have to learn to trust themselves and also trust that there's a higher plan a divine plan a higher plan that uh can foresee and even though you're not in control doesn't mean that nobody's in control all right i'll see you guys later